Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, video from fellow international students. So excited to talk to you all today. This is Arjun Kashetti, all the way from Toronto, Canada, founder of fellow international student. Here is where your growth begins. And uh, I'm very excited today to have Tatiana on the call. Uh, Tatiana is my good friend. We met on LinkedIn and I've been very impressed uh, with her work so far. Uh, she's a supply chain recruiter working in the GTA area. And uh, she's done some amazing work so far in her career. And in today's podcast, we're going to dive deep in on top five uh, unanswered questions in supply chain management. And uh, with this video, you can absolutely skyrocket your um, uh, supply chain career in Canada. So again, Tatiana, thank you very much. Welcome to the uh, podcast. And I'm so excited to learn from you and uh, uh, provide the same value to our uh, subscribers and viewers. So how about you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell me about yourself and uh, also kind of share about your background, our viewers know, uh, so that they can know uh, w- what you're doing and what you did previously. Thank you, Arjun. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. And, um, you know, even though it's hard to stay away from war in Ukraine and from what is going on in the world right now, I appreciate the opportunity to give back and distract myself from those thoughts, because I know that there are people out there, students, uh, supply chain professionals who feel lost, who feel that their questions are not answered. And that's a great way to contribute. And I appreciate this opportunity today. So, My journey in supply chain started in 2006. That's when I graduated from university in Moscow. I studied engineering. I studied integrated circuit design, quantum physics. So it was not even close to supply chain. In fact, I was dreaming to get into science. But um, the situation was that I had to pay my bills and I was looking for a job uh, where my analytical skills would be appreciated and uh, supply chain happened to be the area that I was advised to consider by my friend. So I started applying to multiple jobs. I did not have experience, but in my country, in Russia, uh, the university you went to was you know, it's it's a big thing. Like if you go to a certain school, even without experience, you can get hired simply because of the reputation of that school. So in my case, that helped, and I was hired by Colgate Palmolive. And at that time, I I was choosing between two roles within Colgate. One role was customer service representative, and another one was supply chain analyst. Mm-hmm. And supply supply chain analyst offered slightly lesser salary than uh, customer service. And I actually look at it from the perspective, which role will make more sense long-term. So financially, it made more sense to become a customer service rep. But then I thought, what will I learn there? Mm -hmm. I I saw more potential in supply chain analyst position. So I decided to take it, even though I was not, um, you know, (laughs) I needed money. I needed to pay my bills. So I made that decision and I did not regret it at all. So I started learning while being on the job and I learned Excel through mistakes the hard way. Uh, But uh, that was the time when I really mastered my Excel skills. It took me three months, two to three months to get to the level where I would fluently use VLOOKUP formulas, pivot table, various text functions. So I joined with very basic Excel. Mm -hmm. I was able to bring it up to advanced level within three months. Again, the hard way (laughs) through learning curve. So my employer was willing to give that chance to me and they kept me. So uh, the next uh, role was a demand planner, distribution planner. When I started as an analyst, I was told that in order to become a planner, you need to work for at least two years because planner in a hierarchy was considered to be a slightly higher position. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, you know I was young I had no patience (laughs) so I started applying for jobs and after one year with Colgate I joined another organization as a distribution planner Mm -hmm. and that experience eventually helped me find my first job in Canada so after that second role as distribution planner we immigrated to Canada and my career in supply chain was not perfect I had to take survival job and I worked as a receptionist in a a massage therapy clinic so 
I was doing survival job, I was networking, I was dispatching patients across GTA. It's a long story, <laughs> probably one day I'll share that with you. And uh, I found my first job in supply chain through networking. One of the patients, my good friend, um, she recommended me to her employer and uh, that happened to be Hudson's Bay Company. Yeah. And I was selected because in that role as replenishment analyst, I was expected to take care of distribution of inventory between stores across Canada mm -hmm. and Russia and Canada are large countries, big countries. So my distribution planning experience was beneficial here. Lovely. And that's how my journey started in supply chain. And uh, later in that position, I started dreaming about my future steps. I wanted to become an executive woman, a leader. Mm -hmm. I was ambitious and uh, I decided to take APEX CPIM course. So that really boosted my career. It took me one year in 2012 to get that certification. So I passed five exams. I decided to take instructor-led courses to prepare for each exam. That was the most effective way for me. And um, after I got certified, I became a supply chain manager. So in my case, certification really helped, even though that job search took about eight months. Mm -hmm. I was employed, I was certified, but for some reason, since my job was an analyst, a lot of recruiters approached me with analyst position. And mm -hmm. I was so mad. I thought, I don't <laughs> want to be an analyst anymore. I want to be a manager or a planner. So that's, but I do not regret that experience. Looking back, I can tell that that experience made me a better recruiter. Absolutely. My yeah. character, I met with almost all recruiters of Canada. I went to multiple interviews. I changed in my car. So it was interesting experience. And um, at some point, um, I had to take a break. I was on maternity leave. And that's when I reevaluated my values. And I was looking for something maybe easier than <laughs> supply chain. And for some reason, I assumed that recruitment would be easier in those, even though those years turned out to be probably the most stressful years of my life. It's like, how little we know about areas we haven't been to, right? So, and I started working as a supply chain recruiter and also it was a step back in terms of compensation. Mm -hmm. um, it was a completely different industry. So it was learning curve for me as well, but I was willing to do that because I was seeking that fulfillment fulfillment, working with people. And that brought me here. Now I own my own company, recruitment firm, Unicorn Experts, which I started in 2019, which is three years ago. So, And I'm happy to say that I continue with supply chain recruitment, supply chain and logistics. I have a portfolio of clients and I'm, I was able to make a difference in a lot of lives. <laughs> so. Absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations! It's your journey is so inspiring, and uh, uh, I can, I can, I can absolutely imagine the transition from being a supply chain, supply chain manager to supply chain recruiter right now. And uh, again, uh, uh, time and time, you are proving that you are choosing purpose over money and and etc. And when you choose purpose and your passion, money follows as a byproduct. So that's that's very inspiring, and we're again excited to have you in this uh, podcast, Tatiana. Um, so moving on, my next question is, right now we are seeing a huge boom in supply chain management in Canada. Um, a lot of colleges are opening up supply chain, man supply chain management programs and uh, a lot of new graduates are graduating from supply chain management programs and there's a lot of jobs as well. Um, how would you share your thoughts on why um, supply chain industry is booming in Canada? Well, first of all, um, let's look at the consumption of uh, of goods it certainly increased over the past years so there is need and uh, some of the products are manufactured offshore others near shore so good need goods need to be brought in and that's uh, inbound logistics uh, as well as supply chain has seven functional areas it has purchasing manufacturing inventory management demand planning transportation warehouse solutions and customer service i think mm -hmm. people started looking at supply chain as a complex function they started to take it seriously they see the impact supply chain has on the total cost of goods and uh, that's why supply chain became as I said, complex function, and we need more people to handle similar issues simply because of the workload and complexity. And, um, you know, many companies, they 
take supply chain as a risk assessment function. And in today's environment, risks are high. And, um, you know, we have to stay safe. We have to ensure uninterrupted supplies. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why. And also supply chain, as far as I understand, based on my conversations, is a relatively affordable program mm -hmm. in colleges. And I know that uh, supply chain has more open spots for students. Yeah. I'm glad that colleges support economy and they bring new workforce. It's just we need to understand and improve our ways of engaging that new workforce into the economy and make sure that the right supply chain roles are matched with the right professionals. Mm -hmm. That's why how international students market themselves, how they position their interest is very important. When someone approaches me and says, I'm looking for a job in supply chain, I ask them to clarify which area specifically in supply chain interests mm -hmm. them the most. And the same logic applies to marketing. I'm sure that there is no such thing as easy niche of business. You can always divide it and be more specific. That is going to help students with marketing themselves. Absolutely. I really love your answer where you mentioned about the inbound logistics, the exports, right? Because in Canada, most of the products and services we don't produce or we don't manufacture here because of the climatic conditions, the lesser labor force or etc. And it, sometimes it, it, it gets cheaper to outsource and bring the product from um, uh, expo, expo, sorry, imports and uh, we can we can distribute here and, and etc and absolutely like you know more and more companies are recognizing um, the importance of supply chain management because when i got started um, uh, I, when i took my supply chain management program from seneca college um, in 2015 i had no idea why i took that program in fact my roommate actually suggested hey, you know what you did international business management and supply chain is a viable opportunity to take it and yes there was uh, a seat available and it was affordable program and i just took it and i graduated and right Right now, I'm the biggest beneficiary of that, and I, I have zero regrets in taking supply chain management. And I'm so excited about the future, what supply chain has to offer. Um, so that's great, uh, Tatiana. Uh, moving on to uh, the next question. So now we understood that supply chain industry is booming and there's a lot of opportunities for uh, people who want to um, really move into this industry and et cetera. So as a recruiter, where do you see supply chain moving forward in next five to 10 years, maybe in terms of what areas or what uh, things which, which would boom in supply chain industry? Mm -hmm. Arjun, thank you for this question. Of course, it is uh, difficult to predict that far in a constantly changing environment. We are living turbulence times when we can't really forecast properly uh, within a year. But there are some big trends that I'm happy to share. Uh, the first trend is that people want to have resilient supply chain. And they know that resilient supply chain means visible supply chain. So flow of data, ability to communicate is essential for supply chain. Being able to communicate bad news, respecting other people's time. So that visibility is crucial. Mm. Another big trend, you mentioned that in Canada, we bring goods in from uh, faraway countries and that creates a problem because, um, you know, if, if lead time increased significantly, you have to uh, reevaluate your safety stock, mm -hmm. but then your storage facility may not be big enough to accommodate to your estimation. So that sourcing offshore brings a lot of problems and companies want to diversify their supplier portfolio. So they go uh, near shore or uh, onshore. So they, I think uh, if professionals who are studying supply chain want to know which areas will need them the most. I think that's the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. uh, or their ability to assess and select suppliers, maybe take care of governance piece where mm -hmm. they have to you know, look at the contracts and being able to maintain relationship with multiple suppliers, having their backup options. So that's, uh, that's crucial. And of course, sustainability, mm -hmm. circular supply chain. What do you do with uh, refurbished material? How can you implement it? Again, it comes down to manufacturing and uh, reducing carbon footprint. And uh, another trend is the increasing number of automation. Mm. There are certain areas of supply chain, like warehouse operations, for example, that gets more and more automated. 
Of course, it depends on the scale and the company size, but uh, that's the trend. So if you want to be in supply chain and if you want to succeed in supply chain, look at it as a highly cross-functional area. Look at your ability to present, influence, mm-hmm. maintain relationship. Look at those areas that are so complex that machines cannot solve them. And that comes down to our human skills, to our mm-hmm. ability to think fast, to think, utilize critical thinking. So that's, these are the trends. Did I answer your question? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. People skills and uh, automation and, and the data-driven, what you mentioned, are absolutely, I'm seeing the same. And diversifying suppliers. Mm-hmm. And do and you want to comment anything on the data, com- working on complex data and uh, being analytical? Yeah, that's uh, also, um, and again, it depends on the industry. There are different industries that have their supply chains and they manage their supply chains a certain way. For example, retail that has access to huge um, sets of data and this data can be used to predict uh, potential uh, demand so if you are in retail uh, those jobs those roles are called business intelligence and Mm -hmm. everything that's business intelligence means that you need to know something beyond excel Mm -hmm. which is python sql uh, uh, tableau is good for visualization uh, and so the business intelligence is growing. So look at those areas where huge sets of consumer yeah. behavior data is, gets generated. Uh, if you are looking at energy sector, for example, uh, sourcing and purchasing professionals are often required to have PMP certification, mm-hmm. which may not be required in retail environment. So because it's a highly project-oriented industry where mm-hmm. you need to collaborate not just with salespeople or uh, suppliers, but also with engineers. And you need to be able to adjust your communication depending on who you're talking to and what are you trying to, to do. Lovely. That's that's great, great, great answer, Tatiana. Thank you very much. It was deep and it was very self-explanatory. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, so now that we we established okay why supply chain is booming and we also understood uh, uh, how does the next five to ten years obviously we can't predict anything but at least based on what we know we can share in terms of how the supply chain is going to look like in next five to ten years maybe like three to five years uh, to be precise and uh, moving on um, like you know let's keep keep in the consideration of a fresher because when I say fresher maybe between zero to two years of experience mm-hmm. and let's say I'm a fresher I have zero to two years of experience a little bit back home or a little bit here I worked in a part-time job which which has mm-hmm. an inventory or logistics kind of an experience and I have a certification from one of the colleges uh, Seneca Humber or Lambton or etc and mm-hmm. I'm actually looking into getting into a supply chain entry-level uh, entry-level job which requires zero to two years kind of an experience um, so what would be the typical um, salaries or the salary range, what um, one fresher could expect if somebody has less than two years of experience, according to your knowledge? Mm-hmm. Arjun, thank you for this question. And of course, um, I want to, speci- uh, to, uh, to say that different geographical areas have different uh, ranges for freshers because the cost of living in GTA is higher than, for example, in Windsor or Sarnia. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, for a fresher with zero experience. If we are looking at logistics, more operational roles, more like data entry roles, it may be 35,000, 45,000. It depends on, again, where the job is located Mm -hmm. and what is the nature of this job. Because many entry-level jobs, they don't have that level of responsibility when the cost of mistake is high. So they are mostly data entry, monitoring, they may be evening shifts, day shifts, weekends. So as a fresher, I encourage you to be flexible because supply mm-hmm. chain is, um, is an area of business where most likely you will experience longer hours, mm-hmm. fast environment, stress. So prepare yourself for that as well. If you show flexibility and you know your ability to work over the weekends or longer hours, your chances are higher. But I would say around 40k, 35, 40, depending on the area. And of course, depending on the functional area of supply chain, depending on the industry. Some industry industries tend to pay better than others. Yeah, so do, you, do you mind uh, sharing on what industries are higher higher paying right now, according to your uh, um, knowledge? 
Mm -hmm. Well, based on my practice and the clients I work with, because I can only speak on behalf of my experience and what I see, uh, pharmaceutical industry tends to pay better. Medical device industry pays uh, better. And uh, energy sector. So retail may not be where pharma is. But again, it really, I'm cautious and careful providing this information because every case is unique. Agreed. You can find um, information that may prove me wrong. So absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I completely understand. And and do you want to comment? But also, Arjun, sorry, it also depends on how the person, how the candidate, is motivated. Mm -hmm. If the person is certified, uh, shows interest in supply chain, um, that definitely adds adds points. And a lot of clients, a lot of companies are looking for loyalty, even if you were in survival job but you were there for one year, let's say you worked one year in mm -hmm. T4, it shows that you are a loyal person, you're a hardworking person. So you may not have experience in supply chain, but if you have some work experience, you can showcase your character through your dedication, through mm -hmm. your uh, relationship there. Because if you were successful enough, so much so that you got promoted within, let's say from a line worker to supervisor, it means mm -hmm. that, you care about your work, even though it's survival. So we do look at character and we assess our potential risks associated with, uh, you know, turnover. Lovely, lovely, uh, Tatiana. I mean, I, I got good understanding towards how does it look like for an entry-level um, role as well as the industries. Do you want to comment, um, do you mind commenting on the functionalities? What functionalities? As you told, there are seven different functionalities. Um, mm -hmm. In supply chain, according to you, what functionalities are maybe like you can pick top three functionalities according to you, which has better pay than rest of it, according to you? Mm, I would say purchasing, um, inventory management, demand planning, uh, transportation more into senior roles when the person is experienced, because when we start hiring for senior transportation managers or transportation managers, that's where the pool gets very shallow. We don't have enough talent at that level. So when there is shortage of talent, when there is deficit, of course, through negotiations, counter offers, the numbers can go high, right? Uh, so it depends. If we are looking at entry-level positions where uh, companies have a feeling that there is a lot of talent available, uh, we may not see that huge of a difference. Mm. So the higher we go, if you invest in yourself, if you stay loyal to your niche, I would say if you picked one niche and you like it, do not move around. More to around yeah. Because companies are also looking for your recent experience. Mm. If you did something five years ago, the way you did it may not be relevant to mm. what market needs today. Mm. For example, like as, as you mentioned, let's say you picked up inventory, like let's say you started as an inventory coordinator at, at an entry level, mm -hmm. try to at least be there for three, four years to build that experience, become become an analyst and become a senior analyst, do some processing. Or planner, or, or maybe if you really want to invest in yourself as a professional, don't be afraid to do things outside of your job description, especially if you're working for a smaller organization. Mm -hmm. The more areas you get exposure to, the higher your value is. If you take care of end-to-end -end supply chain, that's amazing. Um, in my work experience, I can tell you that so many times I was doing things that I was not really paid for, but I had to do it to succeed in my job. I was able to do marketing projects sometimes. Uh, and if you take that holistic approach, when you understand how your work impacts the experience mm -hmm. of the customer, when you care about the entire business, even though you may think that you're underpaid, trust me, that attitude is a good habit to have. You will take it with you wherever you go, and you will be able to provide a lot of um, examples during interviews in the future so invest in yourself get involved get engaged in as many functions or meetings as you can yeah absolutely love that love that tatiana i love your energy and you've been uh, very generous in terms of giving your honest answers and these answers are going to really impact so many people who are watching this video because there's so, such a less content on supply chain management particularly in Canada and people are graduating and they're really looking for experts words and and there's no other better expert I can find in the supply chain who have uh, who have supply chain experience and also right now working as a recruiter so it's a deadly combination and uh, you're absolutely doing doing some amazing things and last but not 
at least I have my, my last question and with this we'll wrap it up. Um, so uh, like, you know, let's assume a fresher or a new immigrant who's coming to Canada and looking for looking to enter in the supply chain management industry. Maybe they have one, two years of experience or maybe they've graduated from one of the community colleges here in Canada. What message you would like to give to them so that way they go with that positive energy towards their job search, positive energy towards upgrading their current job and moving on to another levels. I would say um, the short advice, I would say respect yourself, respect each other, value relationship. Uh, there is no such thing as unimportant person. Uh, don't look at people whether or not you can benefit from them today. Care about people, be a decent human being, be someone who you yourself respect. Have your set of values. Sometimes sticking to your values will cost you money, but in the long run, you'll never regret being a decent person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that. And once we value somebody and we, we, it's like, you know, a law of sowing and ripping. Every time we value somebody or we give to somebody and the God is, God is going to bless us with abundance. Um, again, like, you know, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, your time, Tatiana. I know uh, you've been very busy individual working and um, like, you know, prioritizing things. And we really appreciate as fellow, team fellow international student, really appreciate for your time. And we know that you're doing some amazing work within Canada, trying to help so many people get their jobs guys please follow tatiana on linkedin i'm gonna uh, tag her um, uh, i mean tag her profile in this um, description and uh, she helps a lot of people uh, get their jobs and etc obviously you can't barge in and ask for jobs if you if you no, qualify yeah. if you qualify and if your profile matches she'll be more than happy to help you get the uh, right right profile and uh, again like think about building the long-term relationships and with that we are done signing off thank you arjun thank you bye